Hey everyone, my name is Kristen and welcome to my channel. Grab a drink, grab a snack, get a cozy little blanket and let's get ready to craft. Today we are going to be making a applique um, letter. So the first thing that I did was open up my Embrilliance. I'm gonna go to File, Merge Working File. Um, you can go through your files and choose whichever you know design or number or letter, whatever you want. Um, today we're just going to be making an A. It's simple, it's right at the top. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my flash drive. I'm going to put that in there. Oops. So do file, save as. You're going to make sure that it is a JEF file if you're working with a genome. Um, but for this one, we're just going to do A and save it. Okay, before you head over to your machine, you are going to grab your stabilizer. Roll it out just a little bit. Make sure that you have enough. And let's just go ahead and cut right there. Sometimes I do like to cut just a little bit over. That way that I'm not trying to fight the stabilizer to, you know, line up with the hoop. The next thing that you're going to do is, well, the next thing that I'm going to do is take my fabric and just cut a rectangle around the hoop. Um, since this is just a practice applique, just to kind of show you, um, you know, the basics of how to do an applique, we're just going to do a piece of fabric. That's the cheapest thing to practice on. It's something that I highly recommend instead of using up all of your t-shirts. Um, I started out with t-shirts and I messed up a bunch. So, um, and also these scissors I picked up from the Dollar Tree for $1.25 and they are amazing fabric scissors. Highly recommend these. Um, I just put my fabric on top of another piece of fabric and just go over it, trying to get out all of the wrinkles. It does not have to be perfect. So we're just going to set that to the side. Next thing I'm going to do is cut just a small piece of fabric from here. Um, these are the original um, scissors that I bought for cutting the fabric. They were like $17 and I'm pretty sure that I found a dupe on Amazon for about $4. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend going to Joann's and picking up your scissors. I definitely recommend shopping around if you're able to. So I'm just going to do a little rectangle for our applique. I would say that these scissors are working out pretty good. Heat and bond light, actually, that's the kind that I use. Um, the rough side is the side that you do a iron on the back of your fabric. Usually I just kind of line it up a little bit and just cut around it. it does not have to be perfect. All right, so I'm going to take the back of my fabric, put it down. There is a rough side to the heat and bond. I'm not sure if you all could see that. And then there's just the paper backing. So we're gonna put the rough side to the back of the fabric. Go over the iron, just a few seconds. That's all that it needs. Um, once it is done um, cooling off, usually I just wait a few seconds and it will peel right off. If it is giving you issues, like it wants to stick, then that probably means that it needs to be ironed on just a little bit longer. Um, but it does cool off pretty quickly. And look, it's just peeling right off, super easy. There you go. And you can see that it has a shiny film to it. Um, so once you are doing the applique, there are no frays. Um, I do go ahead and I cut around it that way that I know exactly what parts of the fabric does have the heat and bond on it. Um, and I don't have to worry about, oh man, I didn't move it over far enough and it doesn't have heat and bond on that one part that we did the applique for. So I highly recommend going ahead 
and just trimming around the corners. Just like that. All right, before we move on to our machine, I'm gonna show you how to hoop your fabric. I'm gonna untighten this. There's a top piece and a bottom piece. Bottom piece is always the one that has this little toggle thing. Put your stabilizer on top. Put your fabric on top. And then you're just gonna put your hoop on top of it. So I'm just going to tighten it up just a tad bit. I'm also going to pull the fabric. You can see it's starting to get really tight. Make sure that there are no waves in it. If there are waves in it, your fabric will move. Your design will look off. All right, we're going to go ahead and tighten it up just a little bit more. It is just this. Tighten it. There's also a little tool that comes with the embroidery machines. Um, it's kind of like a flathead screwdriver. Anyways, um, I also heard on a YouTube video that I was watching before I started doing embroidery is you'll know if your hoop is tight enough when it sounds like a drum. So, sounds like a drum, pretty tight. There's no wrinkles or ruffles in the back. Um, so, let's go ahead and put that on our machine. Okay, first thing we're going to do is turn on our machine. Usually it just takes a second. Also make sure that there's nothing behind your machine for your arm to hit, otherwise it will knock the tracks off. It's currently loading up our USB. You're gonna click on the USB. Click My Designs. And I would also recommend not putting so many designs on your USB stick. It does bog down the machine. The machine will run a little bit slower. I think you can hear my kids in the background. Um, but we're just going to do the A. It's telling us at the hoop size, about by four. Okay, so it told us that the size was a five by four. We don't want that. So we're going to click edit. And then you're going to click on the hoop and this is hoop B. Click OK and then click OK again and it tells you that it's a 5.5 by 7.9. Okay, go back. It moved the control arm out so now we are ready to put the hoop on. I'm just going to turn my machine a little bit so that you all could see what's going on. Here's the back of the hoop. This, you just turn to lock it in. So we're gonna put it over here. Can't really see from this angle. Just put it on top. Can't see, okay, there we go. And then you're gonna turn it to lock it. I'm gonna move my machine back just a little bit. The first one that it's going to do is called a placement stitch, but let's go ahead and get the, um, the thread on. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna use pink. Let me change the color. Okay, we're gonna use a white thread. I think that will show up a lot better than pink because pink on pink is pretty much the same color. Um, you could put the thread up here I like to have it down here that way that I can see exactly what's going on um, to each their own though. So right here, you just follow the steps, one, two, three, four, and five. It's numbered up there. Then you're just gonna put the thread through there. This is a automatic threader. Um, so you're just gonna pull this down just a tad bit until it clicks over. Don't pull it too hard. Put the thread through there. Oh, I can't see if that's behind it. Oh, yep, it was. Okay, so there's a loop. Just 
pull your finger and it'll pull it out. You can also take it up here with the thread cutter, pull it, and you can go ahead and lower your presser foot and you could press start. Usually I like to hold my thread. Um, sometimes with embroidering machines, it will, you know, jump your thread. Um, so I just kind of like to control it by holding it. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is called the placement stitch. So we're just going to go ahead and press the start button. It is telling you to raise the needle bar slowly. So what you're going to do is roll it up a little bit. And it's also telling you to lift the presser foot to change the color. If you're not changing the color, then you can just go ahead and press start. So let's go ahead and do that. You can also change your tension. Um, sometimes I do like to keep it at a three, just depending on what sort of design that we are working on. Um, but let's go ahead and put down our fabric. All right, so we have our fabric down. Sometimes I do like to put my hands up here just to kind of keep the fabric in place while it's trying to do the tack down stitch. Um, but to each their own, just watch your fingers. is telling you to go ahead and lift the presser foot and to change that color. Okay, so before we press start again, I'm going to go ahead and take the hoop off and I'm going to cut around the fabric. Make sure that you do twist this up here to take it off. And let's just go ahead and cut. I do like to use these smaller scissors um, just to be a little bit more precise with it. Cut that extra string off. But let's just go ahead and trim it up. It's hard to do it on camera. <laughs> this is like a different angle than what I cut, but it's okay. Um, with this applique design, I do believe it has to be cut very close to your letter, otherwise I think that it will show, but we'll get as close as we can. Again, this is just practice, just to kind of show you how to do the design. Um, but I'm pretty sure that this one is where you're supposed to cut very close. Okay. I went ahead and I cut all the way around it. There are some spots that I didn't cut that close to the line. Um, we'll just see how it works out. Let's go ahead and put our hoop back on our machine. I cannot see from this angle. All right, got it on there. Go ahead and put that presser foot back down and press start.
um, I would do it very gently so that you don't cut the shirt that you're going to be working on or the second fabric back there. Hopefully I didn't just cut it. Um, but I'm going to cut around it pretty close. That way that there is no fabric showing through. This is such a pretty fabric. All right, so we have cut. Oh, I hate this angle. Can't see anything. Lock it in, let that press your foot down, press start. If at any point that you need to stop your design, you just press the stop button, just like that. Change out your color, whatever you need to do, and press start if you would like. just telling us to lift the presser foot, change the color out if you need to, which we're not going to, put the presser foot down, press start again. design is now done. Take it off the hoop. Let's take a look at it. See how it looks. The sliding is horrible. But look how good it looks. You can definitely tell where the fabric is showing here and it's also showing a little bit right here. So I would highly recommend you know just checking to make sure that whenever you do cut around your fabric that you have it um, trimmed up very good. In order to take it off you just unhook it like this. And you could just plop it out like that and set the hoops to the side and there is your design turned out great <laughs>